I know we feel pretty good about Eberflus, or at least that's the overall conception out there amongst the fan base, especially with the new haircut, the new sneakers. Like, the look has changed. And I think that almost has a lot of people more excited than what they did on the field for some reason. You know, at the end of the day, we looked at a season where we got rid of our defensive coordinator in week two for whatever reasons. Um, we knew we should have fired our offensive coordinator by week eight, but you can't you can't sit there and lose your offensive and defensive coordinator in one season and expect to keep your job. It just felt to me like, hey, we were so close to being able to do a complete reset, get new coaching staff in there, go get Jim Harbaugh out there or something, make him a deal he can't refuse, and get the number one overall pick and get a – like it was just so close, yet we decided to keep Eberflus. We wound up getting some prominent coordinators. Shane Waldron has some history of success in the NFL. Eric Washington has some history of success in the NFL. However, I feel like if we're 0 and 3 this year, 0 and 4, you quickly start looking at Matt Eberflus. What do you think about the coaches we have coming into this year? Eberflus and the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator. I I am absolutely excited about. Waldron and Washington. I'm will, I'm definitely willing to give them a chance to see what they do. At no point was I ever clamoring for Eberflus to come back. I, I think he's a terrible coach. I don't, I don't I don't understand why they brought him back. Why do you fire your coordinators but keep keep the worst one out of all of them? I, I, in my own my, that's my opinion. You know, I mean, a lot of people. Uh, you know, he grew up here, so he's you know he's gonna be a gr- he's gonna be a great coach now. You know and for what? I, what is? I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me what he's done outside of get, getting a Indianapolis Colts team to an above average defense that he's a, he's good enough to be a coach in the NFL. Because I, because my personal opinion, and I and I'll take this to the to the bank. After he is done being the coach of the Chicago Bears, he will never be a head coach anywhere ever again. I, I think the reason he's kept his job is more situational based off history rather than anything he's done. I think typically teams want to give a head coach three years. And I know we fired like Mark Trustman after two. However, that was a situation where the expectations were high and the product, be, you know, the result was very low. So you looked at it as, hey, you're failing. The expectations here were very low. Mm-hmm. And we've improved, so it's kind of hard to sit here and fire. Like if we got three wins again this year, and it matched last year, maybe then you could have made that case where like you're not getting any better, you're not doing anything. But because we won a couple more games, and because he's only in year two, I think the situation kind of dictates that hey, you just bring this guy back. But I hear you. I'm with you. I personally would have rather moved on because, in my opinion, coaching could be an issue here moving forward i just don't understand how you can be sitting in a meeting room and you say well i, I personally think that matt Eberflus is going to take us to the promised land oh okay so you got jim harbaugh out there who obviously was available why the hell didn't you throw a freaking blank check at him is it that you're afraid to get a, a, a big name coach or a, a big name player are they you cheap know, yeah, I don't know. I'm of the believing that if I got these two guys in front of me and I say, who's better? <laughs> There's not going to be a lot of people that say, well, we should keep Matt Evans instead of going after hard after Jim Harbaugh. I would venture to say out of 100 people, 99 would say that <laughs> that guy's better. <laughs> I do. I'll take Mike Rabel, personally. I, I, w- I wasn't against that one either. I, I don't even know why the hell he got fired, to be honest with you, but at the end of the day, you know, again, I, I, I don't understand the thought process. Maybe it came from uh, hires and said, hey, Ryan, we're going to get we're going to get through this coach. You know, just let it play out. And then you, you could get whoever the hell you want after the third year. I, I cannot understand for the life of me how that they continue to think that a guy like this is a good coach. I, I don't either. I mean, the only highlight anything I saw about him was – a little clip where he was given, where he had like nicknames for every player. Like, you, dude, you want nicknames? I'll go in there and give you nicknames. There's plenty of real coaches with history of success. Like you said, I don't know what Matt Eberflus history of success really is. You know, if you're going to replace both coordinators, I just don't understand why not replace the head coach as well. But 
they they did what they did, right? Just go after a big name. What's the problem? Are we anti like paying someone? I don't get it. It's got to be it. It's got to be a financial thing. It's got to be a cheap financial thing because what other reason could there be? I don't know. I I don't know because I mean you had a chance to go all in on Jim Harbaugh, and you didn't do it. You didn't do it. You didn't do it at all. Everything I read on numerous websites, reports, granted, again, I don't know if they're true or not. They, like, barely even talked to the guy. <laughs> Correct. How could, you, how could you not talk to him? How, why, how do you not bring him in and say, yo, what's it going to take to be the next parasite coach? Because we'll get rid of this guy. We'll get rid of this guy right now. Oh, well, I mean, the fact that you didn't even really show interest, that's nuts. That's crazy. It's Jim Harbaugh. To me, you know, Cliff Kingsbury was available. I would have taken him as offensive coordinator, especially if you plan on drafting Caleb. Oh, you don't got you gotta tell me Cliff everybody knows I'm a I'm a massive fan of Cliff Cliff. Are you? Okay. As a coordinator, as a coordinator, not as head coach. Correct, because he's shown competence and success. And the um ideology there was, well, what if you don't do well, you're gonna bring in like okay. The way Eberflus would lose his job would be if the defense starts giving up fourth quarter leads again and this and that. And if the offense is clicking, you have King, uh, Cliff Kingsbury there, you're going to bring in a guy that could potentially take your job in the future? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, why not? Like, for you to be afraid of your coach taking your job means you suck to begin with. Like, you shouldn't be afraid. You should want to put the best staff together for the talent you have and hope to succeed with it all and not sit there and make decisions based off of your job security. And it just seems silly to me. I would have loved uh, Cliff Kingsbury to be here, especially if we're going to draft Caleb. I was really, man, I, there, there was one report where I read the bears are talking to him or I don't know if they interviewed him or whatever it was, but you know, I was like, man, that would be so awesome. Like Texas, Oklahoma, USC, Alabama mentality. You know what I mean? You just got to have like, some of those guys sometimes, you know, if the guy would have came here and if you would have hired somebody and you hired Cliff uh, Kingsbury and he gets the offense to score 28, 25 points a game or something like that. I mean, how, how could you complain about that? You know? Mm-hmm.